From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. As we've been reporting, the COVID-19 pandemic has created a bifurcated IT spending picture. And over the last several weeks, we've reported both on the macro and even some for, come at it from, from a vendor and a sector view. I mean, for example, we've reported on some of the companies that have really continued to thrive. We, we, we look at the NASDAQ and it's you know near its all-time highs. Companies like Okta uh, and, and CrowdStrike, We've reported on Snowflake, uh, UiPath, the sectors, RPA, some of the analytic databases around AI, maybe even to a lesser extent cloud, but still has a lot of tailwinds relative to some of those on-prem uh, infrastructure plays. Even companies like Cisco uh, bifurcated in and of themselves, where you see this Meraki side of the house, you know, doing quite well, the work from home stuff, but maybe some of the traditional networking not as much. Well, now, what if you flip that to really try to understand what's going on with the shape of the recovery, which is the main narrative right now? Is it a V shape? Is it a U shape? What is what's what do people expect? And now to understand that, you really have to look at different industries because different industries are going to come back at a different pace. With me again is Sagar Kadakia, who's the director of research at ETR. Sagar, you guys are all over this. As usual, timely information. It's great to see you again. Hope all is well in, in New York City. Thanks so much, David. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be back on again. Yeah, so where are we in the cycle? We, you've, did a, you've done a great job and very timely. ETR was the first to really put out data on the COVID impact with the survey that ran from mid-March to, to mid-April. And now everybody's attention, Sagar, is focused on, okay, we're starting to come back Stores are starting to open. People are beginning to, to go out again. And everybody wants to know what the shape of their recovery looks like. So where are we actually in that research cycle for you guys? Yeah, no problem. So like you said, you know, in that kind of March, April timeframe, we really want to go out there and get an idea of what we're going to the budget impacts, uh, you know, as it relates to IT um, because of COVID-19, right? So we kind of ended off there around a decline of 5%. And coming into the year, the consensus was a growth of four or five percent, right? So we saw about a nine hundred thousand basis point swing, you know, to the negative side. And then the topics we covered in March and April were, you know, which sectors and vendors uh, were going to benefit um, as a result of, of work from home. And so now, as we kind of fast forward into the research cycle, as we kind of go more into May uh, and and into the summer. Um, rather than asking those exact same question again, again, because it's just been, you know, maybe 40 or 50 days, we really want to focusing on uh, the recovery type as well as uh, kind of more emerging private vendors, right? We wanted to understand what's going to be the impact on, on these vendors that typically rely on, you know, larger conferences, more in-person meetings, because these are younger technologies. There's not a lot of information about them. And so last Thursday, uh, we launched our biannual emerging technology study. Uh, it covers roughly 300 uh, private uh, emerging technologies across maybe 60 sectors of technology. And in tandem, uh, we launched a COVID flash poll. Uh, right. What we wanted to do was kind of twofold. One, really understand from CIOs the recovery type they had in mind, as well as if they were seeing any any kind of permanent changes in their IT stacks, IT spend um, because of, of, of COVID-19. And so if we kind of look at the first chart here uh, and kind of get more into that first question around recovery type, um, what we asked CIOs in this kind of COVID flash poll, uh, again, we did it last Thursday, was what type of recovery are you expecting? Is it uh, V-shaped? So kind of a brief uh, decline, you know, maybe one quarter, and then you're going to start seeing growth uh, into 2H20. Uh, is it U-shaped? So two to three quarters of a decline or deceleration revenue. And you're kind of forecasting that growth and revenue as an organization to come back and 2021. Uh, is it L-shaped, right? So maybe three, four, five quarters of a decline or deceleration, and then, you know, very minimal to moderate growth or none of the above. You know, your organization is actually benefiting uh, from, from, from COVID-19 as, you know, we've seen so many reports. So those are kind of the options uh, that we gave CIOs. And you can kind of see it on that first chart here. 
Interesting. And this is a, a survey, a flash survey of 700 uh, CIOs, or you know, approximately. And the interesting thing I really want to point out here is this, you know, the COVID pandemic was, it didn't suppress, you know, all companies, you know, and, and the return is, it's not going to be a rising tide lifts all ships. You really got to do your research. You have to understand the different sectors, really try to peel back the onion skin and understand why there's certain momentum how certain organizations are accommodating the work from home. Uh, we heard you know, several weeks ago how there's a major change in, in networking mindsets. We're talking about how security is changing. We're gonna talk about some of the permanence, but it's really, really important to try to understand these different trends by different industries, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. But if you take a look at this slide, I mean, obviously most people expect this U-shaped decline, I mean, uh, you know, U-shaped recovery rather. So it's two or three quarters followed by some growth next year. But as we'll see, some of these industries are gonna really go deeper with an L-shaped recovery. And then it's really interesting that a, a pretty large and substantial portion see this as a tailwind, presumably those with you know strong SaaS models, some um, uh, annual recurring revenue models. Your thoughts? If, if we kind of start on this kind of aggregate chart, um, you know, you're looking at about 44 uh, percent of CIOs anticipate a U-shaped recovery, um, right? That's the largest bucket. Uh, and then you can see another 15 uh, percent anticipate an L-shaped recovery, 14 on the V-shaped, and then 16 percent, to your point, that are kind of seeing this this tailwind. But if we kind of focus on that largest bucket that U-shaped. You know, one of the things to remember, and and again, when we asked this two CIOs within the within this kind of COVID flash poll, um, we also asked, can you give us some commentary? And so, one of the things that, or one of the themes that are kind of coming along with this U shaped recovery is, you know, CIOs are cautiously optimistic about this U shaped recovery. Um, you know, they believe that they can get back onto a growth cycle uh, into 2021 as long as. There's a vaccine available. We don't go into a second wave of lockdowns. Uh, economic activity picks up. A lot of the government actions, you know, uh, become effective. So there are some kind of let's call it qualifiers with this bucket of CIOs that are anticipating a U-shaped recovery. Um, what they're saying is that look, we are expecting these things to happen. We're not expecting another lockdown. We are expecting a vaccine, and if that takes place, then we do expect uh, an uptick. Uh, in growth or going back to kind of pre-COVID levels in, in 2021. But, you know, I think it's fair to assume that uh, if one or more of these are absent and things do get worse as, as, as all these states are opening up, maybe the recovery cycle gets pushed along. So kind of at the aggregate, this is where we are right now. Yeah. So as I was saying, you really have to understand the different, not only different sectors and all the different vendors, but you really got to look into the industries and then even within industries. So if we pull up the, the next chart, we have the industry sort of breakdown and sort of the responses by the industries, V-shape, U-shape, or L-shape. I had a conversation with a CIO of a major resort uh, just the other day. And even he was saying, well, it was actually, I'll tell you, it was Wyndham Resorts, a public company. I mean, and obviously that that business got, got crushed. They had their earnings call uh, the other day. They talked about how they cut their CapEx in half, but the stock, Saga since the March lows has more than doubled. Yeah. And so, you know, that's amazing. And now, but even there within that sector, they're peeling that onion saying, well, certain parts are going to come back sooner, certain parts are going to take longer, depending on, you know, what type of resort, what type of hotel. So it really is a complicated situation. So take us through what you're seeing by industry. Yeah, sure. So let's start with uh, kind of the IT telco retail consumer space. Uh, Dave, to your point, there's going to be a tremendous amount of bifurcation uh, within uh, both of those verticals. Uh, look, if we start on the IT telco side, um, you know, you're seeing a very large bucket of, of individuals, right, over 20% that indicated uh, they're seeing a tailwind, right, or additional revenue because of COVID-19. And, you know, Dave, we spoke about this all the way back in March, right, all these work from home vendors, um, you know, CIOs were doubling down on on cloud and SaaS, and we've seen how some of these vendors have reported in April. Uh, you know, with with very good reports, all the major cloud vendors, right, select security vendors, um, and so that's why you're seeing uh, on the kind of telco side definitely more positivity, right, as it relates to recovery type, right. Some of them are not even going through a recovery; they're uh, they're seeing an acceleration. Same thing on the retail consumer side. You're seeing another uh, large bucket of people who are indicating, look, we've benefited. 
Uh, and again, there's going to be a lot of bifurcation. here. There's been a lot of retail consumers you just mentioned with the hotel lines uh, that are, are, are definitely hurting. Um, but, you know, if you have a good online presence as a retailer and, you know, you had essential uh, goods or, or groceries, you benefited. And, and those are the organizations that we're seeing, uh, you know, really indicate uh, that they saw an acceleration due to COVID-19. So I thought those two, those two verticals between kind of the IT and retail side, uh, there was a big bucket or, you know, of people who indicated positivity. So I thought that was kind of the first kind of, you know, as we talked about kind of peeling this onion back, uh, you know, that was really interesting. You know, tech continues to power on. And I think, you know, a lot of people try, I think that somebody was saying that the record um, the time in which we've developed a, a vaccine previously was like months or something. And mm -hmm. it was, I mean, it was just like years. Uh, yeah. But now today, 2020, w we've got AI, we've got all this data, you've got these you know, great companies all, all working on this. And so, you know, wow, if we can compress that, that's going to change the equation. A couple other things, Saga, that jump out at me here in this chart that I want to ask you about. I mean, the education you know, colleges are really, you know, kind of freaking out right now. Some yeah. are coming back. I know, like, for instance, my daughter at University of Arizona, they're coming back in the fall, evidently. Others are saying no. You can clearly see the, the airlines and transportation has the biggest sort of L shape, which is the most negative. I'm sure restaurants and hospitality are kind of similar. And then you see energy, you know, which got crushed. We had, you know, oil, you know, <laughs> negative people paying you to take barrels of oil. Yeah. But now look at that, you know, expectation of a pretty strong, you know, U-shaped recovery as people start driving again and, and the economy mm -hmm. picks up. So maybe you could give us some thoughts on on some of those sort of outliers. Yeah. So I kind of bucket, you know, the, the next two outliers as uh, from an L-shaped and a U-shaped. So on the L-shaped side, like like you said, uh, education, airlines, transportation, and probably to a little bit lesser extent, uh, industrials, materials, manufacturing, services, consulting these verticals are indicating uh, the highest percentages from an L-shaped recovery, right? So three plus quarters of revenue declines and deceleration, followed by kind of, you know, minimal to moderate growth. And look, there's no surprise here. Those are the verticals that have been impacted the most uh, by less demand from consumers and, and businesses. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, on the energy utility side, and then I would probably bucket maybe healthcare, uh, pharma, those have some of the largest uh, percentages of U-shaped recovery. Uh, and I, it's funny, like I read a lot of commentary from some of the energy and the healthcare uh, CIOs, and they were said they were very optimistic about a U-shaped type of recovery. Um, and so it kind of, you know, maybe with those two industries that you could even kind of lump them into, uh, you know, probably to a lesser extent, but you could probably lump it into the, the prior one with the airlines and the education and services consulting and IMM where, you know, these are definitely the verticals that are going to see the longest, longest recoveries. Uh, and it's probably a little bit more uniform uh, versus what we kind of talked about a few minutes ago with, you know, IT and, and retail consumer, where uh, it's definitely very bifurcated. You know, there's definitely winners and losers there. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's a very complicated situation. A lot of people that I've talked to are saying, look, you know, we really don't have a, a clear picture. That's why all these companies have, have, are not giving guidance. Many people, however, are optimistic not only for a, va a vaccine, but 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 also their thinking is, you know, young people with the disposable income, they're going to kind of say, damn the torpedoes. I'm, I'm not really going to be exposed. And, you know, yeah. they could come back much stronger. Um, it, it, you know, there seems to be pent up demand for some of the things like elective surgery or even some other sort of more important uh, health care needs. So that obviously could be a, a snapback. So, you know, obviously we're really closely looking at this. One thing though is, is certain uh, is that people are expecting a permanent change and you've got data that really shows that on the, on the next chart. That's right. So one of, the, one of the last questions that we asked kind of this, you know, quick COVID flash poll was, um, do you anticipate permanent changes to your kind of IT stack, uh, IT spend uh, based on the last few months, you know, as everyone has been been working remotely, and uh, you know, rarely do you see results point this much in one direction. But ninety two percent of CIOs and and kind of IT, you know, high level ITN users indicated yes, there are going to be permanent changes. And you know, one of the things we talked about in March, 
And look, we were really the first ones, you know, you know, in our discussion where we were talking about work from home spend kind of negating or balancing out all these declines, right? We were saying, look, yes, we are seeing a lot of budgets come down, but surprisingly, we're seeing 20, 30% of organizations accelerate spend. And even the ones that are, are, are spending less, uh, they, even them, you know, some of their, some of their budgets are kind of being negated by this work from home spend, right? When you think about collaboration tools and additional VPN and networking bandwidth and laptops and, and security, all that stuff, uh, CIOs now continue to spend on because what, what CIOs now understand is productivity has remained at very high levels, right? Uh, in March, CIOs were very concerned with the catastrophe and productivity that has not come true. So on the margin, CIOs and organizations are probably much more positive on, on that front. Um, and so now, uh, because there is no vaccine, we're, we're, you know, CIOs and just in general, the population, we don't know when one is coming. Uh, and so remote work seems to be the new norm moving forward, especially that productivity, um, you know, levels are, are pretty good with people working from home. So from that perspective, Everything that looked like it was maybe going to be temporary just for the next few months as people work from home, that's how organizations are now moving forward. Well, and you, we saw Twitter um, basically said, we're going to make work from home permanent. And that's probably because their CEO wants to you know, live in Africa. Uh, <laughs> Google, I think, is going to the end of the year. I think yeah. many companies are going to look at a hybrid and, and give employees a choice. Say, look, if you want to work from home and you can be productive, you get your stuff done, You know, we're cool with that. I think the other point is, you know, everybody talks about these digital transformations, you know, leading into COVID. And I got to tell you, I think a lot of companies were sort of complacent. They talked the talk, but they weren't walking the walk, meaning they really weren't becoming digital businesses. They really weren't putting data at the core. And I think now it's really becoming an imperative. I think there's no question that that what we've been talking about and forecasting has been pulled forward. And you, you're either going to have to step up your digital game or you're going to be in, in big trouble. And the other thing that I'm really interested in is will companies sub-optimize profitability in the near term in order to put better business resiliency in place and better flexibility? W will they make those investments? And I think if they do, you know, longer term, they're going to be in better shape. It, you know, if they don't, uh, they could maybe be okay in the near term, but I'm going to put up a caution sign a little longer term. No, look, I, I think uh, everything that's been done in the last few months, you know, in terms of having those continuation plans, because you know, due to pandemics and all that stuff, that is now, look, you got to have that in your playbook, right? And so to your point, you know, this is where CIOs are going. And, and if you're not transforming yourself or you didn't before, you know, lesson learned, because now you're probably having to move twice as fast to support all your employees. So I think, you know, uh, this pandemic really kind of sped up uh, you know, digital transformation initiatives, which is why, you know, you're seeing some uh, companies, SaaS and cloud related companies with very good earnings reports that are guiding well. And then you're seeing other companies that are pulling their guidance because of uncertainty, but it's it's likely more on the side of they're just not seeing the same levels of spend because if they haven't oriented themselves uh, on that digital transformation side. So I think, you know, events like this, they typically... Uh, you know, showcase winners and losers uh, than, you know, when, when things are going well and, you know, everything's kind of going up. Well, I think that too, there's a big, you know, discussion around is the S&P overvalued right now. Yeah. Um, I, I won't make that call, but I will say this, that there's a lot of data out there. There's data in earnings reports. There's data about this pandemic, uh, it, which it continues to change, may maybe not so much daily, but you're getting new information multiple times a week. So you got to look to that data. You got to make your call, pick your spots. You know, talk about a stock picker's market. I think it's very much true here. There are some, some going to be really strong companies emerging out of this. You know, don't gamble, uh, but do your research. And I think you'll, you'll find some, you know, yeah. some gems out there, you know, maybe Warren Buffett can't find them. Okay. <laughs> but the guys in main street, I think, you know, it, it, I, I'm I'm optimistic. I, I wonder how you feel about about the recovery. I I I, I think we're now maybe tainted by tech. You know, I'm very much concerned about cer certain industries, but I think the yeah. te tech industry, which is our our business, is going to come out of this pretty strong. Yeah, we look. Uh, the one thing we we should and we should have stated this earlier: the, the majority of organizations are not expecting a V-shaped recovery, uh, and yet I still think there's 
part of the consensus is, is expecting a V-shaped recovery. Uh, you can see, as, as we demonstrated in some of the earlier charts, the you know almost the majority of organizations are expecting a U-shaped recovery. And even then, as, as we mentioned, right, that U-shape, there is some cautious optimism around there. And I have it, you probably have it, where, yes, if everything goes well, it looks like 2021, we can really get back on track. But there's so much unknown. And so, yes, that does give, I think, everyone pause when it comes from an investment perspective. Uh, and, and even just bringing on technologies in, into your organization, right? Which ones are going to work, which ones aren't. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely in the boat of this is a more U-shaped than a V-shaped recovery. I think the data backs that up. Uh, I think, you know, when it comes to cloud and SaaS players, those areas, and I think you've seen this on the investment side, a lot of money has come out of all these other sectors that we mentioned that are having these L-shaped recoveries. A lot of it has gone into uh, the tech space. I imagine that will continue. Um, and so that might be kind of, you know, it, it's tough to sometimes balance what's going on on the investment, the stock market side with, you know, how organizations are recovering. I think people are really looking out into two, three quarters and saying, look, you know, to your point, we set up earlier, is there a lot of that pent up demand? Are things going to get right back to normal? Because I think, you know, a lot of people are anticipating that. And if we don't see that, I think, you know, the next time we do some of these kind of COVID flash polls, uh, you know, I'm interested to see whether or not, you know, maybe towards the end of the summer, these recovery cycles are actually longer because maybe we didn't see some of that stuff. So there's still a lot of unknowns. But what we do know right now is it, it's not a V-shaped recovery. Agree, on, on, especially on the unknowns. There's monetary policy. There's fiscal policy. There's an election coming up. There's okay. there's there's escalating uh, tensions uh, with China. There's your thoughts you know, on the efficacy of the vaccine. What about therapeutics? You know, uh, do people who've had this get immunity? How many people actually have it? What about testing? So. The point I'm making here is it's very, very important that you update your forecast regularly. That's why it's so great That's to right. have this partnership with you guys because we, we, you know, you're constantly updating the numbers. It's not just a one-shot deal. So, Sargat, you know, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, looking forward to having you on in uh, in the coming weeks. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, yeah. We'll uh, we'll really start kind of digging into how a lot of these emerging technologies are faring uh, because of COVID-19. So that's uh, I'm actually interested to start digging through the data myself. So yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll do some reporting in the coming weeks about that as well. Well, thanks everybody for watching this episode of the Cube Insights powered by ETR. I'm Dave Vellante for Sagar Kadakia. Check out etr.plus. That's where all the ETR data lives. Uh, I publish weekly on wikibon.com and siliconangle.com and you can reach me at dvellante. We'll see you next time.